kaya ngala wangin nuna ngala wangin ngala kora mot wangin nyi liang wangin nuna nyi liang wangin kaya wa so i'll speak to you in both my nyunga language which is the language of our people here in the southwest of western australia particularly the perth region which is wajak then i'll also speak to you in english of course which i'm doing now to interpret maman jinang nuna nuna jinang ngala buja kaya wa and may the good spirit watch over us while we're here in the country of our people. My name's Richard Wally. I'm a Nyunga. Got connections to Wajak, Baladong, Berenjarab, Wardan, Ewart, and Yamaji. And I've been involved with cultural activities all my life. I was brought up um, around culture, around language, around dance, around stories. So I was quite blessed to uh, to be involved with um, a, a large story. Uh, one of the biggest stories we'll probably tell in Perth, the the giants. Our patron is uh, Richard Wally, who's been conversing with the the festival and Jean Luc for quite some time. So a while ago, and I can't exactly remember when, but Uncle Richard had lunch with me one day and told me there's something really big coming and he would really like it if Yuri Arkin were involved and then if I could come on board to, to help facilitate it, to help bring it to life. And um, me being me, I said, yeah, sure, I'm, I'm happy to help whatever needs helping. Um, little did I realise what it actually was. So I started to pull together uh, a cultural advisory uh, committee or uh, Indigenous Component Advisory Committee. And they came on board to, to help with, you know, cultural content and where we could go and what we could um, safely do culturally, you know, um, and spiritually. So um, in those conversations, we really started to look at, you know, what, what, what is important about, you know, coming onto Noongar country and what's that engagement? What does that actually mean to two special people that are coming, regardless of how tall they are? The, the Noongar, uh, female Noongar dance group, who are there to wake up the giant, who are there to be a part of her dreams and a part of her sleeping, um, before the Lilliputians arrive. So, you know, there's been some really good engagement and we've got three didgeridoo players who are on all the time who are there to help wake up the, the diver giant, who are there to play during the, the parade. And then we've got three other didge players, so that's six in total, who are who are doing call signs from the water and, and the shore, playing together and the Aboriginal flag and the Australian flag together to signify who's, you know, sending the message. And, you know, these are very, traditional but very beautiful components which we were able to, to, to weave into this beautiful story and we've got a story of a, of a, of a man who, who travelled inside a whale so you know he, he actually spent a lot of time underwater inside a whale and we've also got creation stories about giants about the man and woman giant who came um, when the earth started to become real and so these old myths these old archetypical stories they're, they're quite similar all over the world we have our own aesthetic to them in, in terms of you know our spirituality shares with a lot of the animal spirits and and you know our totems our our, our family and our friends in the the, the, the plant and, and animal world so um, these stories allow us to to look at um, different aspects of our own humanity and when you're looking at you know stories that we can share uh, that stretch across cultures uh, you know the French um, cultures and, and their and their old stories and Jean-Luc's imagination and his you know his creativity then you add the the, the, the Anzac story and the story of the dry, the diver and and also the, those old spiritual stories about the traveling through the land and that's depicted on the boat these legends can all be refreshed and actually be retold again. And that's really exciting. That's really exciting. The essence of a welcome to country is calling up the ancestors and the spirits to watch over people. It's done in many different forms. Some people do it with, with language. Some use English, some use songs, some use dance. Um, there, but it doesn't matter how you deliver it. It's where it's coming from, the essence that you're de delivering it with. As uh, long as people know who they are and they have, they have that cultural authority, then they have that ability to deliver a welcome country in their f style, their form, and on behalf of their families. So it is, there's no one way to do a welcome to country. Um, there's also what we call blessing of an event. Uh, the difference between a welcome to country and a blessing of an event is welcome to country is bringing people in like have, having your visa checked or a passport when you first land here 
and uh, this is your, uh, your, your, you know, your opportunity to be blessed and brought into that, um, into the community. Whereas the blessing of an event is those people already live here, been welcomed before, and we're actually standing on ceremony here by creating something that is special, spiritual. We want an event to, to, to go without any incident. Uh, uh, we'd like the blessing of people with this event. Then that becomes another uh, presentation. So there's two different parts. There's a welcome to country and a blessing of an event. It's hard to get a really good sense of, of, of how this project works until you're actually on board. And I think, you know, the people of Perth um, are very lucky to have this, you know, this year.